Welcome back. You're watching Political Exchange, where we continue our discussion with Kusatu President Dumo Dlamini. Mr. Dlamini, we were speaking about the social issues uh, pertaining to health and education. Let me bring matters to the economy, which is your core concern. We've seen that President Jacob Zuma called a special summit of all the social role players, including yourselves, business, other federations like NACTU, FEDUSA, and of course also AMCO, in light of the um, wage disputes and, and unrest that's engulfing the mining sector. And one of the key issues that the president argued for is that people must go back to work, that people must respect the existing labor processes. Um, there will be a return to stability and law and order. And then, of course, also there will be the long-term addressing of the socioeconomic needs of workers. But you guys are planning a march on the 27th of October to Rustenburg. Um, and you were saying that you need to go to Rustenburg, you need to bring your presence there because that is where it all started. Is that perhaps not contradicting what the president has asked for, that you return to work? How is going to march in Rustenburg going to send signals that uh, we are taking charge of the economic situation in the country? Yes, uh, look, th th there is no contradiction uh, with that. You must remember that uh, the problem we're facing now which has spilled over into many areas in the mining sector with the potential of spilling over into other sectors of our economy, started at uh, Rustenburg, particularly by Impala Platinum, where Impala, after the union signed an agreement to raise the salaries of employees at a particular percentage, decides, and after they had said there was no more money in their pocket to raise the salaries of the employees. They then go single-handedly without consulting with the unions, uh, increase selectively the salaries of the category called minors in that area, in the Impala Platinum, by 18%. No negotiations, nothing, they just raise the salaries, creating an impression firstly that they have a lot of money but two, uh, creating an impression that uh, they wanted to destabilize and disorganize those unions they had a relationship with by just talking direct to those workers, they give them the money. That then leads into loan mean Marikana because now workers believe there is a lot of money. But as it happens, a continuous work to dislodge the NUM was happening jointly by a uh, management and the other forces of people who have been expelled from the union and people that were beginning to emerge forming a new union to be a counter to the NUM. And we've understood that to be a situation where dislodge the NUM, weaken COSATU, weaken the alliance then everyone says it's a free for all. So are you uh, suggesting, Mr. Dlamini, that it is in fact employers that is in part responsible for the instability we have regarding people making wage demands that are out of the agreements that have been struck in the relevant bargaining council? Exactly. The blame is put squarely on employers, and in particular, Impala Platinum for what they did. The loan mean thing comes as a consequence and a complication because you then have loan mean negotiating and allowing people who do not even have any recognition agreement with them to come and sit in the bargaining uh, uh, structure at uh, loan mean, which was wrong in itself. So, so, so the whole area has, because it is densely uh, occupied by many mining houses, it uh, becomes then a sore point of this grievance of the workers. And uh, we under the guise that the NUM has sold people out because NUM failed to negotiate up to 18%, which the employer could easily give. So let's destroy the NUM. We are going in there to defend the National Union of the Mine Workers, to defend collective bargaining. Hence now you're talking, uh, Platinum uh, Belt is now saying we need centralized bargaining, which is very, very important. We're going in there to say the labor rights that have been fought for over many, many years, 
should be defended, at which point at the Rustenbeck point. Is that the that's justification where, for the march? Th that march is solely to do that. Remember, uh, Impala Platinum has dismissed 12,500 uh, workers, largely members of the NUM. And, and if you allow and say those dismissals can just go unchallenged and cannot be reversed, forget. We are going to say reinstate those workers, make sure that what they are demanding is properly negotiated in the structures. Let's come to that issue of properly negotiated. We saw that we know that AMCO doesn't have recognition agreements um, and that it doesn't meet the threshold. And yet President Zuma invited them to be party to the talks. Should you not show the same generosity from your side, given the fact that although they don't have the required numbers, they do have a presence and they are very material to what happens. In fact, you yourself have said everywhere where AMCO goes, there's violence, there's an illegal strike, when unprotected strike, and then you have chaos. Isn't it time that Cosato accepts the reality of AMCO in the platinum sector? Cosato, the NUM, accepts the right of anybody or any organization to recruit properly, to, to, to fight for organizational rights to be recognized following the law. What Cosato will never accept what the NUM will never accept is that people will beat workers, will kill workers, and force them into joining a union that they do not have and force them to resign, be paraded to resign from their union, conniving with managers and that particular organization which seeks and wants to be a union. We do not accept that. We don't think it is the right way to do. We are calling for people to follow peaceful and lawful means to recruit new members or to recruit new members in, in a particular situation. So we're not opposed to them coming in. They must follow the peaceful, the lawful means to recruit. Mm -hmm. Let us return to the issue of policy debates. Now, you said earlier that you've made a lot of gains under this administration. You've been consulted. You have had a big say in the new growth path in IPAP2. But one of the things that you haven't been able to do is to influence monetary policy. Mm -hmm. um, and many analysts argue that there's an implicit bargain in the alliance that Kusatu gets to be influential as far as it goes uh, with the labor law regime, um, but that the fiscal conservatives in the alliance uh, retain control over monetary policy and the Reserve Bank. What did the Central Executive Committee speak to on the issue of monetary policy? Because it has been a central demand of COSATU's that um, we, d we have a different monetary policy. The, the, the COSATU, and in this CEC in particular and previously, we're saying the Reserve Bank must be nationalized. It has to come to the ownership of South Africans and the government of South Africa in particular. It can't be that it is uh, controlled from Germany uh, and, and, and people will, will just decide. The Reserve Bank has to play a developmental role into the economy of our country. But how country. does it retain its independence? Look. Do you think it is independent when it is uh, controlled outside this country? That's not independence. It's a reserve bank that is influenced by what those uh, uh, owners from abroad uh, want about the reserve bank. If they say, do not uh, reduce the interest rates, they won't. Do not uh, uh, desist from using inflation, uh, I mean interest rates to target inflation, they won't. That's a problem. We, we, we would want the bank, which is a South African Reserve Bank, that's what the name says. When it is controlled in our country, it is able to respond. We're not saying it will create jobs, but as it moderates the environment, as it does these things, it is contributing to the developmental agenda of South Africa. Let me come to the issue of um, nationalization. Now we know that um, this is a very uh, big debate within not just COSATO, but mm -hmm. also the Alliance. When I spoke to Secretary General of the African National Congress, Mr. Gwede Mantaj, he said that the policy conference of the ANC was very clear, wholesale nationalization not on the table. What is on the table is greater state involvement, particularly around the issue of what they refer to as strategic nationalization or nationalizing strategic assets, mm -hmm. classifying particular minerals as um, strategic, for example, platinum, which is the view that COSATO 
Lesotho uh, support? We support nationalization as is defined in the Freedom Charter. That's what we've been saying all along. But the Freedom Charter can be interpreted to mean just about anything. People who defend the current mineral regime says that the minerals belong to the state and it leases it out um, via licenses. So it follows the Freedom Charter. Look, there the, the are semantics that will be coming to the uh, debate. The, the test of the debate is at its practical implementation. For instance, we felt and we had welcomed what the ANC policy conference said uh, about the strategic uh, nationalization of the strategic uh, minerals. Key minerals. We have welcomed that, but we'll still say the test of that is in the implementation. Let's let's get into it. Let 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 let's bring it on. They they they've said the state bank. Uh, let, let, let's look into the practicalities of that. But if we look at Alex School, for example, mm. it's a state mining company, but it's not making any progress. Exactly Communities haven't point. benefited. So what guarantees do we have that if, if mines are nationalized, that A, they will deliver jobs, and two, that they will actually add to growth in the economy? COSAD too has been uh, uh, saying we were waiting with an eagerness on the research that was being conducted by the ANC. And by the way, we do not believe that uh, that research would have been concluded and be done in a way that we all would have participated in. Because it is that research that was going to talk to us about the practical experiences that can relate to South Africa's economic We're situation. We're running out of time, Mr. Dlamini. Final question. The Central Executive Committee decided to endorse Mr. Jacob Zuma's second term bid for the ANC presidency and retain Mr. Mantash, Mr. Khalema Mutlante, and of course, Bale Kambete as the chair. You've said the Deputy Secretary General, Tandi Mutise, and the Treasurer, uh, rather the Deputy Secretary, Tandi Mutise, and the Treasurer General, Matthew Sposa, um, have not served the Paul uh, you know, resolutions. Explain very shortly why did you come to that decision? Because we had said even before Polo One, we want the leadership that is capable of uniting the ANC, the alliance that is uh, informed by the desire to have an, an ANC that is biased towards the working class. But if Mr. Mutlante challenges Mr. Zuma, are you going to support him? We have said we won't. If he challenges him, then he's contested. And so if he challenges Mr. Zuma, who would you prefer to be the deputy president of the ANC in the event that Mr. Mutlante goes up against Mr. Zuma? Kosato didn't speak to that matter, which means we'll be open to persuasions or we'll be listening to what other people are saying. Mr. Lamini, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. We've run out you. of time. That's where we have to leave it tonight. Tune in again tomorrow night for another edition of Political Exchange. I'm Karima Brown. Goodbye.